Hey everyone, Kirby Fan here. Before we start the video real quick today, obviously we're all very interested in speedrunning, which is why we're watching this video, but the current state of my channel is going pretty slow. Interaction isn't at an all-time high, so I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a like, comment, and subscribe, especially the subscribe part. I see a fair amount of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed, so if you're one of those people, it would really help me out if you did. And especially if you enjoy my stuff, it's a win-win for everybody involved, right? Thanks again, and now on with the video. Hello again, everybody! Kirby Fan here, and today, this is a video that is long overdue, a Kirby Triple Deluxe Copy Abilities Tier List. Back when I did the Return to Dreamland video, I got a comment asking to do a Triple Deluxe one. This was a couple months ago at this point, probably closer to a few if I'm being honest. And I decided that now is as good of a time as any to finally get this done. Triple Deluxe is a very different game from Return to Dreamland, especially when it comes to the bosses. There are a lot of them where if you attack them too much, deal too much damage as it were, then they activate this long attack that makes them super invincible. So it's all about dealing a very specific amount of damage to bosses in a specific amount of time. Whereas Return to Dreamland, you just kind of wailed on them for a while and, you know, everything worked out. So that does mean that the ordering of the abilities is very different. You'll see some abilities that were pretty bad last time that are still pretty bad here. Some abilities that were great last time that are still great, but at the same time, some got heavily buffed, some got heavily nerfed, and there's just going to be a lot of fun going into this. For those who don't know, I am using the sum of best times for every single true arena run. I got this information off of the Seesaw Wiki. And as far as the tiers themselves go, I don't really like using letters, I feel like using adjectives. Kind of like how things were handled in the old days, as it were. I, I like doing that a lot more. But they're all pretty self-explanatory. Top tier is the best. High tiers are really good. Upper mids are better than the ones that are just good, but not quite high tier. Middle tier, there you go, it's the middle. Low tier, they're not great. And bottom tier, they are pretty bad. Now, for those of you who watch my copy ability spotlights, you might know which ability is already the worst, since I covered it. However, it is one of the very early ones, not one that I am particularly proud of, if I'm being perfectly honest here. But on the very bottom, worst ability in the game for the true arena, it is Spear. Heavily, 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 heavily nerfed from what it was in Return to Dreamland, which was already, you know, pretty good. But here, it is almost a full minute below the second worst ability. It's damage that it can deal, just it, it doesn't compare anymore. There's nothing in Spear's kit that deals good damage at a fast pace. The speed at which abilities deal damage in this game is generally pretty sped up from Return to Dreamland. That game, just everything was pretty strong, so you can just kind of reliably do an attack that's really quick and really strong and get away like that. Here, there's a bit more advanced stuff going into it, and the rate at which abilities can deal damage is much faster, so Spear, it, it really just can't keep up, and that's what the problem is. There's no real high points here. It's not a full minute behind the next two, but the fact that it's close is kind of telling that this ability, unfortunately, is no good. Keep this out of any speedrun discussion for Triple Deluxe, because it's pretty bad in the main game, too. Now, second from the bottom is Sword. This one was also pretty heavily nerfed. The damage being not very good again. It's just like Spear, only the damage is a bit better. What's nice about Sword compared to Spear is that there are a lot more attacks that have complete invulnerability on them. It isn't like Spear where it's just, you don't get any luck in anything. Sword has that one specific aspect going for it, but its damage isn't very good. It has some attacks that are invulnerable, but they're not very good generally. It has the charge attack, the spin attack, and that's okay, but it isn't great. And uh, the fact that that's the best thing that it has when there are so many other abilities that can do better, that just kind of is not a very good look for Sword. I know there are a lot of Sword fans out there, but it is for Triple Deluxe. Not great. I guess it's a bit better in any percent and stuff like that, you know, than normal game, but here... Big yikes. 
especially since the one right above it is only by a couple seconds, and if you remember the Return to Dreamland video, you can probably uh, figure out that spark, the fact that it's better than these two, just kind of does go to show how not good those two abilities are. But to give Spark something, it lost the shaking the Wii Remote perk that it had from Return to Dreamland, which meant nothing for the arena modes. But what it did get is that in Triple Deluxe, if you hit an enemy and then deselect your ability and then take it back, you can actually hit the enemy twice, which is obviously mostly useful for boss fights. And Spark has a pretty good one. The problem with Spark is that doing this consistently back to back to back to back, etc., is very not good for your hands. Your hands are going to hurt, and I obviously can't recommend that anybody really do this. You could say that this should be below Spear, because even though it has a better time, it's going to kill your hands much worse than Spear is. But we are only looking at time here, and this is something that is very much doable without tasks. Any person can do this. And it's, it's pretty cool tech. You know, I like it. Um, but is it good? By all means, no. These This is the last of the truly just kind of like Return to Dreamland. I really only think there's three that are outright you know, terrible. The rest are just either kind of bad or better. And this one, there is... You know, a meta to it. There are techniques that you can use to make it go better, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not good. Don't, don't, don't fall into the illusion that this is a good ability by any stretch of the imagination. And with that, the bottom tier is done. As I said, we now go to the low tier abilities. These ones, like Spark, they have some tech going for them, but their times are just generally much better, and they aren't as bad, especially, especially on the poor fingers. And first things first, uh, we got Wheel. Many of you might know Wheel is just super duper good for any percent and stuff like that, but for the sake of speedrunning the true arena, not nearly as much. What's important to note about Wheel in Triple Deluxe was that it was given a charge while you're in the wheel motion. If you're a wheel and you hold down, it'll charge up, and then when you let go, it'll boost forward. And if you jump while you're doing that, it'll deal even more damage. So the big strategy, it's everything, is to charge before you start moving. After that, what you can also do with Wheel is when you jump, you can fast fall and kind of do that instant land that Triple Deluxe introduced from any point of a jump. If you hit down twice, Curry will begin to fall. And if you keep holding down, he won't bounce. Wheel can do the same thing. So what you do with Wheel is that you keep doing that over and over, and the damage that it deals is not bad. And because the initial jump has invincibility on it, when you do the fast fall, you keep that invincibility until you're out of boss hitbox range. For airborne bosses, it's pretty easy to describe it's just that, but for grounded bosses, because they're still there afterwards, it, you need different variations for the grounded ones, which makes it very hard to explain. Hopefully, whatever footage I decide to show here does a better job of explaining what to do against grounded bosses than I ever really could. But at the end of the day, this is all cool, but what I call wheel good... No, it's still... the final time is still... Oh, you know what? I haven't, I haven't been saying the final times. Uh, I'll go over I'll go over the final times at the end of the video. I think that's probably better to do, so that I'm not saying them a bunch of times over and over again. But Wheel's final time is still not, not, not that great. Speaking of not that great, this is one, uh, spotlight-wise, I definitely recommend check out. This is one of the spotlights that I think I cover this ability the best. Up next is Needle. Needle not being towards the very bottom is a pleasant surprise if you don't really think much of Needle. It isn't an ability that comes to mind instantly for a lot of people. I, I think what I like about Needle the most is that what you do with it kind of depends on the size of the boss. If it's a smaller one, then you can just get away with going in the air and using the aerial down B, the Needle Spike that hits the ground. That deals a lot of damage. By itself, that's going to get you the best results, but the standard attack, you know, the needle spines where if you shake the control stick, they'll pop out as a projectile, that attack is really fast, and if you can hit the boss with enough of the projectiles that pop out of needle, it'll actually do more than the grounded spike. What you wind up doing is that you either say, do I go for the faster attack that might deal more damage, or do I go for the slower attack that there has a little setup, but will consistently deal more damage. And I think that's pretty cool about Needle, unfortunately. It doesn't add up to very much. You can see by its placement that it still isn't very great 
but it is the first one where you actually get rewarded for kind of thinking outside the box almost. Another thing that's pretty cool about Needle is that there are actually a few bosses where it does really well. Its kit actually does kind of let it clear them pretty quickly. Unfortunately, on the flip side, it also has some bosses that it is absolutely terrible against. And anything that doesn't fall into either of those categories, it's just kind of underwhelming. But the fact that we're this low and we're already getting into abilities that are actually kind of good, I think speaks to the level of Triple Deluxe's abilities versus the bosses. Now that we are out of the bottom five, we get to the bottom six, aka the bottom ten, and unfortunately, you know, Spear, one of my favorite abilities, we're already getting into another one of my favorites, that is Bell. Pretty much, this is going to be very short, almost all you do with Bell is do the Bell Toss. It is a very good attack. Bell Toss is really good. And if you get the boss in the proper position, you can do a lot of damage with the Bell Toss. But that's really all it has. And this is one of those cases where I think if it was Return to Dreamland, where abilities generally only relied on one attack and bosses didn't have as much health, abilities just kind of felt like they did more damage. This would be a lot better because it's very big hitbox. It goes really high up, has an easy time hitting the targets. Generally, it falls much more in line with what you would expect from Return to Dreamland, but in Triple Deluxe, not so much. Uh, you can be reverse in the air almost. That's what it kind of feels like with the normal ring ding. I like that a lot, but generally, you're just using Bell Toss. And it's not a boring run by any means. It's just you're using this one move. And when you're playing a game where the bosses have a very specific range that they have to be at, it doesn't really help matters all that much. And lastly, this is going to be the final low tier ability. We are going to go with Beam. So the thing about Beam in Trouble Deluxe is that it's actually pretty similar to Planet Robobot, where you use Beam's dash attack to deal the most amount of damage. Unlike Planet Robobot, bosses still kind of have that lingering invulnerability. When you use the dash attack, you aren't constantly dealing max damage to the bosses. In this game, like you are in Planet Robobot, so it's not doing quite as much damage. You can see just comparing the two. I'm not going to put them side by side. This is a simple edit. Also, we're not really talking about Robobot. We're talking Triple Deluxe here. And I mean, that's kind of all you do. The charge attack is pretty good for when you're starting a fight. And the command grab is obviously great if you get to that situation. But for the most part, you are just using the dash attack, uh, occasionally using something else in Beam's kit to deal some specific kind of damage, and then going from there. Not the worst, but I mean, I still have it in the low tier, right? So obviously it isn't great. So with that, we enter the mid tier. These abilities are still rather underwhelming, but they aren't bad. They're just kind of, they're there, they're fine, they're okay, they're pretty good. And to start things off, we are going to go with one that actually did pretty well last time in the Return to Dreamland tier list. Uh, not going to do too great here, and that is Fighter. Fighter pretty much only has one move. It has the Hadouken. You can charge it up to get the red fireball. And that's really mostly only helpful at the start of a fight. Otherwise, you're just throwing out the Hadokens. You're doing reasonably, reasonably big damage. And that, that's kind of it. <laughs> There's not really too much else that you do here. Uh, you might throw out some other attacks every now and then, but generally, not really. Hadokens, Hadokens fast. It's pretty strong. Not, not strong enough to really compete, but, you know, it's okay. I don't want this section to go on too short, but there's really not that much to say about this. Uh, if you like Street Fighter, you might want to pick this up, only because you do a lot of quarter circle forwards. You know, this one's also pretty self-explanatory, too. There's just really not a lot to say here. You press B, and Kirby turns into a stone. You can also press down B, and it'll turn into a big stone. The hitbox that it has while Kirby's turning into a stone for both of these moves is really good. And when you release it, if you release it early enough, then you can do them in pretty rapid succession. But you, of course, you have to be careful of the bosses hitting you. But that's it. That's really all I have to worry about. It's not, it's not really something that gives me a lot to say, unfortunately. So if you like stone, then I guess watch the speed run <laughs> and tell me that there's a lot more going on than I'm saying there is because it's, it's a good run. There's definitely a lot to be said in terms of the precision that's needed. It's just explaining it for a video like this. We're just dragging on. 
Now this one's a pretty big nerf coming from Return to Dreamland, and that game was actually reasonably really good. Uh, here it just kind of settles for okay, and that is bomb. There we go. So the problem with bomb in this game is kind of what I was talking about with why I thought Bell would be really good in Return to Dreamland. That's because abilities that really only rely on one kind of attack do much better than abilities that don't as far as Return to Dreamland goes. You really only need that one attack that's really good. And in Return to Dreamland, you had the bomb toss, which for one reason or another just did an absolute ton of damage. And here, the damage that it deals is reasonably good. And it does have that trick that I was talking about before in the spark video. If you plant bombs or toss bombs or do whatever and they don't explode, when they do explode, you can deselect your ability and take it back, which will make the bomb explode twice, which is actually very, very nice and helpful. But the crazy high damage that it had in Return to Dreamland, it, it's not there. It still does work full screen, which I think is really important. The fact that you can be anywhere and bomb toss and you can still have a reasonable chance of hitting a boss that's really nice but bosses also spend a lot more time in the background you can get as much good damage going as you possibly can but if you can't stop that boss from running in the back you're not really looking great that being said it is actually one of the best abilities to deal with Pyribit, partially because you never have to get close and stuff like that but also it's got to go in the background for every fight. So the fact that Bomb can prevent it from doing that and actually skip out on some of the later animations that Pyrobit does that some abilities can't avoid at all, that's a pretty big perk for Bomb. The fact that it's this high up compared to some of the other abilities you can probably thank Pyrobit for. We, we rag on Pyrobit a lot and it is probably the single worst fight in the entire series. I totally agree with Pyrobit hate. This next ability is probably uh, about the same as it was in Return to Dreamland. I think this one's actually nerfed a little bit. Uh, this one is Leaf. The up B and the aerial down B, where the up B having Kirby pull the leaf out of the ground and the aerial down B being those three individual leaves that pop out. That's really most of what Leaf Kirby is going to do. The only other real cool thing that it has. Similar to what I was saying about Spark, I'll be bringing up Spark a lot throughout this video just because it was the first one that I talked about that had this. If you do the attack where Kirby just shoots out one little leaf on the ground and it spins, you can get rid of leaf and take it back and that will still do double the damage, which is really nice. But for the most part, you are going to be relying on those other two and their damage isn't great. It's not bad, but... As I've been saying a lot throughout this video regarding bosses in Triple Deluxe, if you can't really stop them from going to the background, there's a lot of problems as far as getting a good time. And Leaf can do that for a couple of them. Uh, I was very surprised by how quick you can clear Sectonia's soul, the second half of that fight at least, with Leaf. It's actually pretty impressive. And other bosses too, it's not just that one, it's just that one is the most impressive. But when you can't get through a boss fight qu pretty quick, it is just kind of average. So while it's certainly not bad, it is middle of the road, kind of like what it was in Return to Dreamland, unfortunately. All right, up next, for those of you who haven't seen the Fire Spotlight, uh, this is what I call the overall best ability in the game. And if you haven't seen that Spotlight, I highly recommend you check it out. Put a lot of work into it. It's kind of underperforming a little. So if you want to do your old pal a favor, or a second favor after, you know, the like, comment, subscribing thing that I asked you to do before, thanks. Uh, check that video out. It's definitely worth a watch. And I talk a lot about fire in Triple Deluxe, how it is in the arena, how it's pretty good. The big issue is that Fireball Inferno is grounded. You're not very mobile while you're using it. And you rely on Fireball Inferno for pretty much everything when you're fighting bosses. So it doesn't really end up as an ability that's all that impressive on paper. But the fact that Fireball Inferno just does so much damage and the hitbox is actually pretty big, making it a pretty safe ability. It's also pretty good for moving around, which doesn't really matter so much for boss fights, but for things like the mini bosses where you gotta rush ahead or some bosses that are in the air for a lot of it, it's definitely better for those than some of the other average ones. This is an ability that, when we're talking about the standards of a spotlight, I would describe it as actually pretty good. But by the standards of this tier list, where it's just straight up numbers, the straight up facts, uh, it's, it's average. It's definitely above average, right? This is not a bad ability by any means, but if I would, would I call it great? 
Uh, Ixnay. I would, I would absolutely not. Okay, if you're looking at the tier maker and the position of whip change, that's because whip is next. And I tried to put it on the tier maker and it wasn't cooperating. I'm very glad that it just did. Whip! Whip is a super cool ability in the true arena in this game. You really only find yourself relying on a couple of attacks, those generally being either the dash attack or the anti-air. Not not the anti-air where you whip it a bunch of times in the air, I just mean the up -y where Kirby uses the whip upward. It does do more damage than the whip going straight, which I think is a little odd. But what it ultimately results in is a run that has a lot of precision with placement. Actually using the ability is very easy, except for the command grab, because obviously if you can command grab, you're going to go for it. It deals a lot of damage. But if you're just strictly talking about placement, that's where it's hard. Everything else is actually pretty simple. And if you want, this isn't the beginner ability that I'd recommend. We'll actually get to that one in a little bit. But if you want a, a beginner ability that isn't super busted, but it's still really good, I would recommend this one. Of course, I could recommend something like Spear or Sword to a beginner because they're just not good. It doesn't really matter what time you get, but I don't want to do that. I want you to play with an ability that actually has potential, and that's why I'm talking about these. I, I would say anything from Fighter and above is where it kind of gets to the point where you kind of do want to do a run with it because the times aren't that terrible. And it is not just my bias that's making me say that. I do like whip a lot. I did put it as one of my favorite abilities. I stand by it, but it's not just my bias talking. I actually think whip does have of the abilities that aren't super good. I do think that whip has one of the really cool runs of triple deluxe. And lastly for the mid tier, I think the mid tier in any kind of tier list should always be the most populated. Maybe like the upper mid, mid or upper mid, just, just because you know, it's, it is an average. So I do think it should generally be the most populated, but it, it's, it's beetle beetle. That, that's the next one. For the entirety of this run, you basically only use one attack. And I don't know what the name of it is, but it's when you hit B and Kirby swipes in front of him with the beetle. The issue at hand here is that you don't want to hit B too quickly because then he'll go into his rapid jab into the finisher. You want to avoid that rapid jab because the initial swipe that Kirby does deals more damage than the rapid jab. So you want to time it kind of in a rhythm almost where you're pressing B and he's doing that swipe. You wait as soon, like the shortest amount of time that you can, and then you press B again. He'll do the swipe, press B, he'll do the swipe, etc., etc. You only really ever want to do the rapid jab into the finisher when you're about to either kill a boss, or a mini boss, whatever, or if you're about to go into the boss turns red, gets angry, phase two, that whole thing. In that case, you know, by all means, go ahead, but otherwise, you really only want to use it when you're about to kill a boss. So you're really only seeing one move here, and it's not the most... It's interesting to watch if you know that they have to time it. But if you don't, you're probably just going to be sitting there going, what is this? <laughs> it's still a very fun one to do, though, because of that precision that's necessary. I still think Beetle falls into the really fun to actually do. But it's just when you're watching, you keep in mind, there is a reason why they're only doing this one version of the move. And the fact that they're doing it this quickly is actually pretty impressive. Oh, and you know what I didn't mention? Starting with Whip, we have entered the top 10. That's very exciting. I can't believe I didn't think to mention that point. But Whip is number 10 and Beetle is number 9. So we are getting into the elites now. This is the upper mid where I think the abilities start to get really good. I don't think they're quite comparable to the really dominant ones, but they are still definitely good abilities. I don't think you should really lump these in with the mid-tier ones where it's like, you know, that's kind of like the average line. They are good. The, these are great. They just aren't game breakers like the ones we're going to talk about after. So starting out, this is definitely an ability that got buffed from Return to Dreamland, which is cool to see. We have at number eight, Cutter. Not in that tier, in that tier. There we go. Much better. Cutter is a really fun one to talk about. It has that trick that I was talking about from Spark. Uh, with the fully charged Cutter Blade, you throw the fully charged Cutter Blade, goes behind you, and right when it's about to hit the boss, you get the ability back after you deselect it, and it does a lot of damage that way. You have Final Cutter, of course, which is just a really strong attack altogether. You have the Aerial Down B, which, like in Return to Dreamland, it's crazy how much damage it does. I have no idea why it does so much damage so quickly. How you're able to just instantly act as soon as you land, you just 
bop, 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 bop. It's so fast. Really fun to watch. It's not easy, but it's super satisfying to pull off. Cutter in this game. I'm really glad that it didn't get changed too much from Return to Dream Land. It just kind of kept what it had, but because it just naturally deals a lot of damage and has a lot of options, I think I talked about four different moves that it had that it can use to really help. It's, it's, it's really fun. I'm glad that this ability got nothing but better, and I know in the next game, Planet Robobot, if I do another tier list like that, it's only going to get better again. So... Modern modern Kirby Cutter is definitely one of the best things about modern Kirby. It's if, if you think Cutter's basic, I implore you to look into modern Kirby games. Because Cutter in these, super fun. I love it. I love it. So everybody looking at the tier maker probably is thinking two things. One, why are there two circuses here? It's a little weird. But also, circus is still here. And yeah, circus? This circus is kind of nasty. <laughs> This ability, I, I was not expecting it to be this good, only because I hear I, so many people are weirded out by it, they're not crazy about it. So you hear enough negativity, you just think, all right, whatever, it's probably whatever. Even if uh, this is all a matter of personal preference, this isn't talking about efficiency. So now I'm finally looking into this, and the trampoline and the ball, those two moves on Circus, they do a lot, especially the trampoline. Uh, most of what the run revolves around is the trampoline. You do see some other stuff. You do see its dash attack. As I said before, you see the ball. It's got a reasonably good anti-air with the bowling pins, or whatever these are. I always just kind of see them as flaming bowling pins, but they're a pretty good anti-air. It, it's got a reasonable amount of moves in its kit, and the fact that it's just so strong, that's what I don't get. It's so strong. Look at the trampoline. I say circus is so strong, but it's really just the trampoline. And I would not expect it, mostly just because it's a trampoline. But, I mean, trampolines are powerful, and if you don't treat a trampoline properly, it will hurt you. So I guess it makes sense, but still, I never expected Circus to be as good as it was. And yet, I mean, here we are. It's number six, I think? Yeah, number six. It's kind of crazy. But I ain't gonna complain. I'm actually a fan of Circus myself. I'm one of the few. I think Circus is reasonably fun. And seeing what it does here only makes me like it even more. Speaking of abilities that were just introduced in Triple Deluxe, uh, Archer, this is the ability that I would absolutely recommend a newcomer to True Arena speedrunning in Triple Deluxe. This is the one I recommend you start out with. This run, super easy. What do you do? You charge the sniper shot, and that is it. <laughs> there might be very selective instances where you do something else. Uh, especially, I can think of the aerial dash attack where he shoots the three arrows, and it makes a really satisfying sound, by the way. When you do that, sometimes you're asked to do that, but otherwise you are just generally using the fully charged attack. What's interesting here is that, like I said, Triple Deluxe isn't really a game that kind of rewards abilities for only having one attack. And this is the same way. What's more interesting about the fully charged shot is that the angle that you shoot it at is something that you really have to look out for. This isn't just one attack that you spam over and over and you, you win at the video game, right? You actually need to kind of plan it out, even though it's only the one attack, which is super cool. And then once you kind of get that idea figured out, then you can go to an ability like Cutter or, or Circus, where it's more than one attack. It's, it's a bunch of attacks, as we were just talking about. And it's, it's one of those things where Kirby boss rush speedrunning, it, it all just... It comes together. Stuff like this is really nice. You get a good beginner's ability. Then you have some of the intermediate ones, some of the expert ones. It's all, it's all great stuff. If I ever wind up doing True Arena Triple Deluxe speedrunning, it should be pretty obvious which ability that I'm going to use if you follow the channel. But Archer might, might be one that I get into. It looks very simple, but also really fun. And beating bosses that quickly... Always nice, especially in a game with bosses that can take this long. That said, uh, where's the killjoy? There it is, there it is, there it is. So here's my thing with Wing in this game. It doesn't ruin any percent like it does in Return to Dreamland, but it is not 
an ability in the modern games that I'm particularly fond of, especially looking at what you do with it in this mode's true arena, it is very difficult. It's the same thing that you really did in Return to Dreamlands. You use Condor Dive, which is the aerial down B, and when you hit the boss, you jump out of it and do it again. So it is very demanding. It's not easy. But it is because it's... This is kind of the exception to what I'm talking about, almost. It's... But I guess it's also kind of like Archer, where it requires a lot of precision. And there is an ability we're going to talk about in a little bit that also mostly relies on one move, but still has that precision. And I guess I just kind of want to see Wing not be dominant in something. I just kind of wouldn't mind a game where Wing is kind of whatever, or just not there at all. <laughs> Buffed from Return to Dreamland. Uh... That was the not expecting that. I was expecting it to be either about the same or nerfed a little bit, but no, it's actually better than it was in that game. So if you thought Wing was really good in that game for any percent, you were correct. Not so much for Triple Deluxe. It is still good, but not nearly as dominating. For the boss rush, it is better though. So it got a buff somewhat. Oh, and you know what else about Wing? It's part of the top five. How about that? Now we are into the top four, which is exciting because we are now moving on to the high tier. This one only has three abilities. If you watch the Return to Dreamland video, you probably already know what's going into the top tier. But if you haven't, I'll keep the suspense alive and we'll talk about the number four ability, which is another one that pretty much only relies on one move, and that is Ice. Super Ice Storm is Ice's aerial dash attack and the range and damage that this ability has, or this attack on this ability has, is really, really good. I think I said in Return to Dreamland that you kind of used its entire kit. Uh, you used the Ground and Dash attack a lot, you used Super Ice Storm, um, Freeze or Blizzard, or whatever it's called now, the Command Grab. Yeah, I guess in its favor, you still use the Command Grab, and it being a projectile, you gotta know I gotta bring this up. You deselect the ability while the ice block hits the boss. If you get ice back, it will deal two hits. It'll do so much damage, but otherwise you really only need to rely on Super Ice Storm, which is fine. It's just this late in the video, it does kind of make it hard to talk about. So if you're only gonna really be using one attack, then we're gonna move on. This, this is kind of funny. I guess you could say the same thing about ice uh, that I'm about to say about Ninja. They're both technically nerfed from Return to Dreamland. Uh, technically. Um, Ice was number three in Return to Dreamland, and Ninja was number two. Obviously, now Ice is number four, Ninja's number three. They were they were nerfed anyway. They were just made kind of weaker, just dealing less damage and stuff like that. But they were still very strong. And Ninja, if you saw the Return to Dreamland video, it's literally what I got to say here. That grounded attack where you slash with... I said sword in that video. I'm sure it's it's just like a, uh, a different kind of blade, but I'm just going to say sword again because it's easier. And then the shockwaves come out. I don't know why it deals so much damage. It just does. But again, it's not only that one attack. I think there is a bit more variety to ninja in this one. I'm pretty sure. But it, it's still just, you know, that one deals so much damage. Um, kind of the ones that only... I, I, I guess this is a, a trend with the ones that only use one or two attacks. Uh, these are attacks that were very good in Return to Dreamland, where that was all you needed. <laughs> so transferring them over to this game and only giving them a minor nerf, I guess that dominance that they had in Return to Dreamland just kind of carried over. So I guess that, that, that's something, I suppose. And then number two, um, probably this isn't the single biggest buff that an ability has had from one game to another but it is top five for an ability that went from being very good to a good 30 seconds faster than the one below it. Parasol, let's talk about Parasol. This one is actually gonna be pretty long. In Kirby Triple Deluxe, as well as most Kirby games, let's be fair here, if you are in the air and you have Parasol and you press up, Kirby will start doing the Parasol float. He'll pull the Parasol up over his head, he'll fall down a little slower, and it's very nice, very pleasant. If you press it down, he will fall out of that. What you can do in Triple Deluxe is that if you mash those two in rapid succession, Kirby will instantly go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The Parasol Float has a hitbox. So what you can do against the bosses is just constantly spam up, down, 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 up, down and it'll deal 
the, the damage that it deals is almost hammer levels of shock and awe. That's number one. It's, it is really insane how much damage that parasol deals. And parasol, is it very hard to use? Yes, it's not easy. I'll be straight up with you. It's, it's tough. But when you get going with parasol and you can see how much better it is than everything else in the game, we're talking about how much time spear takes. And here's parasol taking over four minutes less. The gap between the worst and the best is much bigger in this game than it is in Return to Dreamland. And the crazy part is that Parasol is not the best. It actually has over 30 seconds to go before it can top the obvious. Everybody saw this one coming. It's Hammer. I said this in my Return to Dreamland video. I will say the exact same thing here. I'll link the Hammer Spotlight in the upper right or wherever it's going to be wherever YouTube decides it wants to put it. That that video is going to go over everything much more efficiently and clearly than I can go over here. But hammer in this game, all you need to know is that it wipes the floor with Pyribit. The, the, the amount of damage that it does to Pyribit and how quickly you can clear, that by itself just makes it the best ability in the game. It, it could be the worst against every other fight and it would still be the best. But it's... Oof. Just wow. I don't know what else to say about Hammer that you probably haven't heard a million times before. Just wow. And that's it. That is the end of the tier list. I know that there is still the circus there. I don't know why circus is there. But hey, you can see it. It's cool. Circus is there. It's fine. And now we are going to go over the placement of the tier list one more time. And in this run through, I will actually go over how long the true arena run takes with every ability. And we're going to do this lightning round style. So from the bottom up, we've got spear at 10 minutes, 53 seconds, 55 milliseconds. We've got sword at 9 minutes, 57 seconds and 28 milliseconds. We've got spark at 9 minutes, 55 seconds, 80 milliseconds. Up above that, we've got Wheel at 9 minutes, 40 seconds, 6 milliseconds. Needle at 9 minutes, 20 seconds, 80 milliseconds. Bell at 9 minutes, 19 seconds, 68 milliseconds. Then we've got Beam at 9, 14, 67. Right up above that, we've got Fighter at 8 minutes, 48 seconds, 66 milliseconds, my number. Then we've got Stone at 8, 41, 33. And then we have Bomb at 8 minutes, 34 seconds, 12 milliseconds. Leaf at 8 minutes, 32 seconds, 14 milliseconds. Fire at 8 minutes, 30 seconds, 28 milliseconds. Whip, very close at 8 minutes, 29 seconds, 91 milliseconds. Also super close is Beetle at 8 minutes, 28 seconds, 70 milliseconds. Up next, we've got Cutter at 8 minutes, 2 seconds, 57 milliseconds, almost there. Circus at 7 minutes, 58 seconds, 69 milliseconds, Epic Lameo. Then we've got Archer at 7 minutes, 53 seconds, 41 milliseconds. Wing after that at 7 minutes, 43 seconds, 34 milliseconds. After that, we've got Ice at 7 minutes, 26 seconds, 44 milliseconds. Ninja at 7 minutes, 18 seconds, and 96 milliseconds. Parasol at 6 minutes, 46 seconds, and 42 milliseconds. And at the dominant first place position, as always, we have Hammer at 6 minutes, 12 seconds, 10 milliseconds. I guarantee you most of that is because of Pyribit. Oof! That one was quite a mouthful, but I hope you enjoyed watching from start to finish. This was uh, definitely similar to the Return to Dreamland one, a very fun tier list to make. If you would like to see me make any other kind of tier list, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I kind of have a funny feeling I know which one is going to come next based on uh, the fact that I did Return to Dreamland and Triple Deluxe, but you never know. Just want to thank you all one more time for watching before I end the video. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe. Those are numbers that all really help me out, and I appreciate every one of you that does it. And until I see you next, I've been Kirby Fan. This is the Triple Deluxe True Arena Speedrunning Tier List. It is objective. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.